in accordance with the rules of procedure, the second reading debate is adjourned and the bill is referred to the House Committee. This Council resumes the second reading debate on the appropriation bill. Members may speak at today's or tomorrow's meeting. At the third budget meeting to be held next Wednesday, only public officers may speak before consideration of the provisions of and amendments to the appropriation bill by committee of the whole council. Today's debate will end at about 8 p.m., and tomorrow's debate will start at 9 a.m. Members who wish to speak in the second reading debate on the appropriation bill today will please press the request to speak button. Under the rules of procedure, each member may speak for up to 15 minutes. If any member speaks in excess of the specified time, I will direct the member concerned to discontinue. Ms. Abraham Shek. The President. Mr. President, after 20 years of patience waiting for the dream team of our government's management, we have finally got one in the persons of Carrie Lam, Paul, and absence um, CS. This dream team makes up of people from the grass, grassroots rising through the ranks to the top positions of our administration. It is only natural that the people of Hong Kong, not necessarily this institution, to have high expectation of their policies, particularly the budget. Their policies, they expect, would be a policies and budget for the people, especially being made by representative of the people, reflecting the very true spirit of Hong Kong. The maiden budget of the land, land administration is, to put it lightly, rather incoherent and misguided that I have ever seen in my 18 years of service in this assembly. A budget is meant to make available the net necessary financial resources to realize the policy objectives of the government of the day, thanks to the financial discipline and prudence of the existing and previous financial secretaries, Hong Kong now enjoys a hefty fiscal reserve that can keep its machine running for two and a half years without any income. We are in an enviable position to institute some fundamental changes in the approach we tackle our entrenched social problems at their roots. Yet, the budget has turned out to be a rather disappointment, Mr. Secretary. It is so conspicuously biased against the neediest in society that triggered a public outcry. The government has since stitched together a cumbersome $11 billion cash scheme for some 3 million residents left behind. The embarrassing U-turn is evidence of a government at loss and at best, this is not necessarily a bad thing. The overall public expenditure for 2018 to 109 is estimated to 557.9 billion, an increase of 17.6% over the revised estimate last year. The amount greatly surpassed our gross domestic product of 3.8% last year. Yet, the way our money to be spent does not smack a new financial philosophy as pledged by our Chief Executive, Kerry Lam. It is, in essence, incremental, more or less, more the same, of the same. The Chief Executive has referred to the MTR Corporation, of which I am an IED, I declare that, link rates and the mandatory provident fund as three mountains to overcome. I am more worried that she has lost sight of the reality that she is sitting on three other active volcanoes, 
these political explosive issues, a widening wealth gap, in parity in education, and increasingly unattainable decent housing. The three are intertwined and have become a source of growing grievances. The Census and Statistics Department's latest findings put us behind New York as the world's second most unequal society in terms of wealth distribution. Hong Kong Gini coefficient for household income last year reached a record high of 0 0.539 on a scale from 0 to 1. 0 represents equality. Meanwhile, Singapore saw its coefficient fall to 0.458, the lowest in a decade. Mr. President, 0 0.539. It is indeed a heart-wrenching figure, testifying the severity of our social injustice. It warns us of a societal breakdown. While many of us are working to death to make a living, Mr. Secretary and Secretary for Welfare, 5,881 retirees actually died in 2015 waiting for subsidized residential care services. Over 36,000 senior citizens are put on hold for subvented or contracted homes. For those who live long enough, it takes them an average of 38 months to be assigned a bed, with our surplus of over $138 billion. The money is there, but the will, pardon me, Mr. President, the pun that I use is not. The will is there. The, the, the money is there, but the will is not. The government has pointed to lack of labor and other technical difficulty, as explained by the Secretary for Social Welfare. They are mulling over a scheme for the elderly to hire foreign domestic helpers to take care of them in public rental housing flats for singletons. Officials almost congratulated themselves for thinking out of the box. The proposal, however, is expected to, to take five years to take shape. Don't take me wrong. I am totally in support of any ideas to ensure senior citizens live in dignity with proper care. I am myself as an elderly person. The focus, however, must be on those on the centralized waiting team for care and attention places. This is not, not the first time that I am speaking on their behalf. I have been speaking for years, a voice in the wilderness. I dare the Chief Executive and the Secretary for Social Welfare to make a performance pledge to slash the waiting time by half. The budget can then be organized around how to attain the goal. This is a respect that money can buy for those who have made a lifelong contribution to Hong Kong. At the same time, Mr. President, 200,000 residents are languishing in tiny roo rooftop shacks, metal cages, and in famous coffin beds. Bearing this from a representative of the real estate and construction to say things like this. The United Nations has dubbed these cramped and unsanitary homes, if we can call them homes, an insult to human dignity. As of last December, 280,000 applicants were on the waiting list for public rental housing. This is their hope to be upgraded into a relatively decent shelter. Yet, this humble wish has become increasingly elusive. The waiting time for them has now climbed to a record of 4.7 years in the waiting. Inadequate land supply is often cited as an excuse. The government is supposed to launch a consultation exercise on a range of options for hosting land supply. 
The options on offer are, in fact, well known. The society has been engaged in fruitless de debates on the subject over decades. Instead of squeezing a few acres here and there, what we need is a sizable development that can, long -term, that can meet the long-term needs for land, primarily for public housing. The private sector can look after themselves. As I see it, the eastern metropolis to be reclaimed is the most viable way forward. Further, the government should think of eliminating bureaucracy in land administration, making it easier for lease modification to be introduced to bring more homes to Hong Kong. The next budget should focus on how to expedite the required studies and other preliminary works to get whatever preferred options off the ground, particularly the least modification land, the agricultural land. There is no quick fix for our housing problems. Taking over the golf course, which I declare I'm a member, is not a solution. It's only a political gimmick. The least that the government can do is to give a glimmer of hope that a solution at the least in sight. Speaking of hope, Mr. President, many middle class parents are seeking to lift their children out of local educational system to study overseas or even in international schools locally. I do not have the latest statistics on hand, but the tally has certainly been growing at an alarming rate. Sadly so. The chief executive has announced an additional $5 billion for the education sector even before the budget was drafted. The budget has subsequently melted out a few billion dollars here and there. $2 billion to be installed on lift on campus and another $2.5 billion to support student activities. I do not object to such housekeeping appropriations. What we really need, however, is the government to take a hard look off at why so many are striving to shine the local school. Even those who stay put are trying to work out a budget of their own to send their children to tutorials, training and classes of all sorts to make up for what they perceive as inadequacies of our schools. We have the so-called one sport, one art requirement at, in school. The better off would enroll their kids for private tutors and personal coaches. Officials talk a lot about promoting STEM. Parents are again ahead of the system. Computer coding workshop offer in the market. For example, have mushrooms as parents are anxious to get their children a head start to ride the waves of innovation and technology. Children, however, from poor families are simply left behind. Those of ethnic minorities in particular are falling through the cracks. Indian, Pakistan and Nepalese account for over 1% of the local population. By census figure released last month, show that one in five minority residents are living below the poverty line. In particular, the South Asian children in particular are falling through the cracks. Racial discrimination aside, they have added problem of language barrier in, simulate, in stimulating into the mainstream society. Many of them have poor grades and hence social mobility. Ample resources needed to be budgeted to break the downward spiral, given the chance these children can also excel in an inclusive education system. Mr. Secretary, education is for all. There should be no discrimination in education. Another challenge for our education is to nurture enough talents to meet Hong Kong present and future economic needs. Some Jun and South Korea are spending up to 4.5% of, of their GDP on no innovation and technology. Hong Kong has yet to make it to 1%. Our university has combined intake of just 15,000 first-year students, given the opportunities arising from the Great Bay, Greater Bay Area, our annual output of graduates can hardly meet future demands. 
we need to expand both the breadth and depth of our tertiary curricula, particularly in new innovation and, and technology. Mr. President, as my time is running out, Hong Kong used to take pride in vigor and vitality. We will call a city that does not sleep. We are now better known around the world as a city that does not smile, Mr. Financial Secretary, in all your sincerity and honesty, honestness, honesty, please give us a reason or two to reclaim our smile. This is what we want, particularly at FS, from the people and hope that in your future budget you can work for the people. With this word, I support the budget. Thank you, Mr. President. Dr. K.K. Kwok. At three years' budget, uh, is the time uh, where the whole society is most polarized. Uh, we have a reserve of $138 billion. We have a surplus of $138 billion. At first, the um, estimate was only for $16.4 billion. So the difference is $121.6 billion. Ironically, while we have attained a record high surplus, you can ask the majority of our community how many of them are happy with this record-breaking surplus. Figures is very, are very telling. The FS and also uh, public confidence and acceptability of the budget is the lowest uh, since 2008. That means the more wealth we have accumulated, the more unhappy the people of Hong Kong are. Overall speaking, the level of satisfaction for the budget is 28%, and 59% are not happy. So uh, the net is negative 31%. Has the administration ever considered how come when our surplus is so high, when uh, Hong Kong is so rich, uh, people in Hong Kong are, uh, hate the government in this way? and dislike the budget in this way. This is because um, there have been um, news of uh, sweetenings, uh, for instance, uh, $4,000 uh, per citizen costing us $11 billion and still so many people are unhappy. Mr. Paul Chen, the FS, when he was a legislator, he kept uh, criticizing his predecessor, Mr. John Zhang, for uh, getting the estimates wrong. Unfortunately, he has uh, got the estimate even uh, more wrong than his predecessor. If you ask uh, someone in Hong Kong how he can be happy, he'll tell you that, uh, Mr. K.K. Kwok, can you uh, place your mobile phone a little bit apart? Sure. Now, if I can attain a level that can sustain me, then he'll be happy. As we all know, uh, Hong Kong people are very humble. When we talk about over $3 trillion in reserves in our exchange fund, they wouldn't mind the Hong Kong MA uh, to look after uh, those trillions of dollars on their behalf. They just want to uh, see what hope is there for their future. I, in public policy 101, budget should be used as a means for equal and fair distribution of wealth and resources for the community. And let's take a look at uh, what uh, the disadvantage in society has got. The poor population in Hong Kong, after many relief measures from the government, has not seen any obvious improvement. Our Guinea coefficient that reflects the wealth gap in Hong Kong has not improved from 0 0.537. It has now rose to 0 0.539, the highest among developed economies. And this is a shame for everyone in Hong Kong. Many, 
elderly people having got a triple times the uh, allowances that is uh, on top of the OH allowance or the OH uh, living uh, allowance, uh, they are not happy. Why? They know that uh, the money that they have received cannot help them resolve uh, the problems they face. As, uh, for example, uh, health care. The, the elderly population is now the over 16% of our total population instead of 9%. Very soon it will reach a level of 25% or 30% in the coming 20 years. One in three people in Hong Kong would be an elderly person. But in the years, the resources given to a healthcare system is just 2.5% uh, or 2.7% of our GDP. If we look at the information provided by the World Bank, the global uh, level of uh, provision is a ten percent. Many uh, developed countries uh, are, are providing ten or fourteen percent of their GDP to the to healthcare. In Asia, the, even the poorest countries uh, give seven percent of GDP to healthcare. But in Hong Kong, taking taking the, the fabric sector into account is just uh, five points. It's just five percent, and the government is uh, giving very little. It's lit, uh, It's uh, less than what the uh, private sector has been uh, contributing. We have seen an uh, increasing. Elderly population and the waiting times for different services have uh, been on the rise all the time. For specialist uh, service, the longest uh, waiting time is uh, nearly three years. For non uh, um, urgent operation, the waiting time is also close to three years. The government has got so much in in the treasury. And yet, uh, they ask people to take out uh, medical insurance. We know that uh, eighty percent of those who go to the HA uh, clinics are elderly, over the age of sixty-five. If they were uh, citizens of other countries, uh, they would have uh, been given proper uh, uh, support. But in Hong Kong, the, instead of giving them the, a well-earned uh, retirement life, the CE and the CS and FS and even the S for Secretary for Labor and uh, Welfare keep saying that we should encourage these people to rejoin the uh, uh, the job market. And we've seen elderly people uh, picking up, uh, doing cleansing work, picking up um, copper paper for recycling. And uh, we are offering them the very the meager of, uh, wages in return of, for their labor. And yet you want to encourage more of these uh, elderly people to um, work. And then uh, maybe the next step will be to force them to take out insurance for health care. It's not realistic to rely on insurance f as a solution for long-term health care. Even if they are willing to do this, since they are over 65, they will have to pay ten to $30,000 in premium, which is the, the equivalent of the, the uh, living uh, pensions that they have been asking from the government in a universal pension scheme that they have uh, strived to achieve. He said that they, we are in a new era, new era, we have a new government, and that the government is going to be more proactive. But I cannot really give you any praise. Uh, the policies that have been introduced uh, do not bring about um, changes 
or, or pro progress. Last month, I wrote to the FS asking him to pay attention to another vulnerable and disadvantaged group in Hong Kong, and that is uh, children suffering from mental illness. There's a tragedy. Uh, an, an elderly woman, a grandfather to a ch child, a grandmother to a child with learning difficulties. The problems uh, was beyond uh, her ability to cope, and she uh, killed her grandchild, resulting in such a tragedy. In Hong Kong, more than 100,000 children requ require services of various sorts, whether health is well health care, treatment, assessment, or educational, uh, psych psychological services, clinical psychological services, or social work, social service. The places offer is a 33,900. That is to say, the more than 60,000 children in need of service are left to their own devices. If they are queuing up for the uh, pediatric psych psych psychiatry service, the waiting time is uh, more than 133 uh, weeks. The lowest uh, for uh, some clinic is 52. And in the coming years, the uh, l longest waiting time will be uh, reduced to 111 or 70 weeks, uh, depending on the clinic they, they, they go. We have so much in reserve, and now the government proposes to give uh, students $2,000 each. What good would that do? There's no help. That's not even enough to buy a medicine for a month. And if they wait for uh, services offered by the government, the waiting time is in in terms of years. How can the government be so uh, heartless to towards them? I can understand why people are not really happy when we have a, a record-breaking surplus. Look at people living in subdivided flats: uh, ninety thousand households, more than two hundred thousand of them. And uh, we have a record-breaking number of applicants for PRH, 280,000, waiting time 4.7 years. And the government is good at talking, but very little can be done to deliver in the coming 5 to 10 years, according to the government. Please don't uh, think that 4.7 years is uh, going to be the, the real waiting time. It's said that there's no uh, insufficient land supply, but then we have a lot of land reserved by the government. Uh, for example, for village type, uh, 1,200 hectares. And apart from the 500 hectares of brownfield sites to be developed, uh, there's another 800 hectares in the hands of the government. So the government has got a lot of land, but he, it is very smart. It asked the Task Force on Land Supply, uh, which is chaired by a non-official, and, and our attention is diverted. When we want to the end the misery of those who are on the waiting list, the government says we should have a big debate. What are the options offered? Most of the options can be the, implemented by the government. Brown fuel size, a damaged agricultural land, village type uh, sites. All these uh, can be used for the public housing development by changing its policies, but the government won't do this. Instead, it uh, opts for a very convoluted arrangement and uh, a range of debate so as to delay things further. Many people cannot wait. For people or el el elderly people uh, waiting for uh, LCHE places in the subvented sector, many of them fa fail to uh, make it. We have uh, 3,293 waiting for the subvented places. Uh, 
in government operated or NGO operated uh, places more than 6,000 of them to die before the, they had the opportunity to get a place. The government uh, admits that it, it could not do anything about it. So whether we are talk talking about poverty alleviation, housing or elderly services, the government has opted not to do the right thing. It keeps putting up excuses instead of resolving the uh, problems. You give two thousand dollars to children, four thousand to each and every adult. Are they going to be happy? They don't feel any happiness, and they don't see how uh, this affluent uh, society has uh, got any uh, hope to offer to them. We understand this. That's why the government is uh, assessed in such a poor light. Is uh, is what they deserve, Mr. Lau Yip Kuang. Hey, uh, Chu Jing. President, I rise to speak in support of the 2018-2019 budget. This is the first budget from the new term government, and I will be talking about the new philosophy to manage our finances, our business environment, innovation, and technology, as well as uh, health care. And then I will turn to uh, the benefits that uh, uh, villagers in the NT will will be benefit benefited. But this is a pragmatic uh, and forward-looking budget in the various aspects, such as uh, uh, alleviation of poverty and uh, promotion of business. Uh, there are new measures to benefit uh, different uh, sectors in the society. And we would be able to the enhance our competitiveness to, the, to cope with the ch new challenges. Uh, this, this budget involves a total uh, expenditure of $598 billion, or an increase of uh, 7%. Public expenditure has been expanded, and there's a 21.3% in the expenditure for social welfare. Environment, a 14.7% increase. Uh, the government is therefore, in my view, very caring to our community. The surplus uh, for the 2017 is at $138 billion. The reserve uh, has exceeded $1 trillion. And it's said that um, the uh, Treasury is, uh, is uh, overwhelmed with uh, money. Uh, it's because of the uh, income from land premium and um, stamp duty of um, uh, stock transactions. Hong Kong's economy is uh, vulnerable to external factors. And the trade war between the China and the U.S. is looming, and there are many uncertainties. So while we have a very generous uh, financial situation uh, that we should invest for the future, let me now turn to the business environment now and uh, the competitive advantage of Hong Kong. Uh, on the 1st of April, the two-tiered uh, profits tax system will be implemented for SME. They can save uh, up to $165,000 in tax uh, payment. Eligible the corporation would uh, also get the three times tax deduction for the first $2 million in R&D, and the remaining uh, would be uh, with, uh, attract a, a double the tax de de deduction. Uh, this would uh, reduce the tax burdens of startups and uh, uh, and companies uh, engaging in R&D. According to the World uh, Competitive Edge uh, report, taking into account all the relevant factors, it said that uh, the, the number one downside uh, factor is the uh, lack of uh, competitive edge. And what is important in this regard is uh, talent. And of course, uh, infrastructure is uh, also important. In this budget, we can see that the government is going to spend uh, or earmark $50 billion to promote innovation and technology. And also, there will be $500 million to nurture uh, 
talent, uh, postdoctoral uh, research uh, uh, talent. It's just uh, one percent of the five hundred billion dollars. Actually, the ten billion dollars have been uh, devoted to the promotion of innovation and technology in the previous year, according to uh, the information from our secretaries. Uh, uh, Secretariat, only six hundred million dollars have been expended. This shows a lack of concrete direction on the part of the government. So um, apparently, they offered a number of um, allocations, but they came off nothing. Apart from the hardware, little action has been taken. So the top priority for the government should be on um, personnel planning and resources should be given on education and nurturing talents. They should um, appeal to talents from around the world in order to um, take up challenges of the new era. Population aging is a medium to long-term challenge. According to the Census and Statistics Department, by 2026, um, every one of four of our population will be an elderly person, and the government would um, allocate $300 billion for and um, another um, hospitalization development plan, and there will be an extra 3,000 beds. In the next three years, there will be more doctors, nurses, and dentists, and the um, subsidized um, places. And um, for healthcare vouchers, um, it, the allocation would increase by $1,000, and um, elderly people would receive $3,000 worth of vouchers. The government has been proactive. However, um, the key to the quality of public health care is the retention of health care professionals. If um, we are always short of hands, especially um, supporting staff, um, fatigue could set in. So um, they might be, um, they might feel um, delusional, and they might enter the private market instead. As for the um, increase in the value of healthcare vouchers, the um, Department of Health must monitor the situation, or else the healthcare vouchers might be used to purchase food items or luxury food, and um, this might be exploited. And now I'd like to talk about the. Um, benefits to villages in the new territories under the budget. And um, allocation is given to improve the um, countryside and peers or rural peers. And this can meet the needs of villagers and fishermen's wall. This is the Lychee wall, pier, um, Ngao Sai Shun pier, in Sai Gong, etc. All these are in the pipeline and they would take four to five years. The budget um, lacks the one-off um, benefits of the previous year. In villages, there is a lack of new recurrent expenditure. Some people might say that there would be broad broadband access to 300 villages benefiting 170,000 people. So um, isn't this good news compared with um, broadband access, um, electricity, water, etc. are even more important to villages. If you go to any village and ask the villagers whether they want roads or broadband, I'm sure they would want roads. Even with broadband access, some villagers who moved out might not come back, but with roads, villagers can really come home. The um, Hang Yi Kok has been um, angling for roads, water access. Or water supply, etc. But due to cost considerations, um, the government has rejected the ideas. They would um, say that um, with little villages, um, there's um, little economic efficiency. So this is a chicken and egg problem. Without the roads, people would not want to live there. Hong Kong's land resources are scarce, and um, everyone is trying to source land. The, sub the task force on land supply will launch a major public consultation soon. And there will be a discussion on increasing land supply and the relevant priorities. The new term government has um, focused on the new fiscal policy. So in terms of the rural areas, the government should adopt new thinking and incorporate innovation. The government said there's a lack of farmland. 
why can't they um, first build roads in rural areas before proceeding to development? If they still insist on development only after um, there is a population and there are roads, um, the thinking is certainly outdated and out of touch with our reality. For rural areas, um, roads must be built and um, there must be a supply of electricity before people would move in. And you should not wait till um, a sizable population falls before you proceed with the infrastructure. Checking village in um, Sai Kong is part of the Sai Kong East Country Park. There's no vehicular access and um, villagers have to rely on the Kaito service. That's why the younger villagers have moved to the urban areas. Some villagers living nearby told me that um, Sai Kong is a great place um, to retire. So um, if the government builds a road to Checking Chun and the vill and the um, surrounding villages, elderly homes can be developed and the elderly people can um, live a life there. This can um, release the land potential and revitalize the villages. That way, villages, elderly people and hikers can all enjoy countryside resources and this is a win-win situation. In terms of um, village infrastructure, there's a lack of dedication from the government, but I commend them for um, updating this or, or upgrading the software and preserving our culture, including village culture. In recent years, the government has um, invested in heritage conservation apart from the um, East um, Cultural Center in New Territories. $300 million were allocated to um, promote non-tangible um, or intangible heritage. So in terms of promoting intangible um, heritage, their efforts have been consistent. The government has revitalized Lai Chi Wall and um, funding is given to um, green groups. And um, the, some NGOs um, or, or green groups criticize that the villages are not in charge of the areas. And uh, I do appreciate their work. But um, according to the government's plans, they assume that applicants are experienced groups or must be experienced groups. And villages have very little opportunity to share their stories. So. Um, when subsidizing groups in the um, promotion of intangible um, assets, they should allow passionate villages to um, carry out um, small scale sharing sessions despite a lack of experience. We have a budget debate every year. And very often this become a ground of um, holding the government accountable. So um, as I follow the discussion behind all these um, numbers, what do we actually want to achieve through the um, financial appropriation? And um, recently a survey on a SMILE index among the service industry, Hong Kong ranked um, fifth to the bottom or fifth to last. So um, Hong Kong people has not smiled for a very long time. In recent years, we've been bothered by housing and um, political turmoil. But uh, a recent incident made me smile. The government introduced um, a subsidy on the new drug on um, um, muscular atrophy and um, Chao Bui Shan and her family um, never gave up. Um, I'm sure um, the government officials, members and the assistants would um, read the budget page by page. But all the public wants is an ideal living environment and um, protection for everyone regardless of um, gender, age, physical condition, they hope to live a dignified life. This is certainly um, a very long path, but um, 
we should rem remember the touching stories and each do our best, and I'm sure we can um, do it together. Miss Dari Lee. President, in, Fe in February, the Financial Secretary announced his first budget under the um, Carrie Lam administration. And um, the DBA feels that um, the budget is dedicated, but there is a lack of commitment. And um, we are happy the that the FS accepted certain proposals on improving the capacity of our healthcare system and promoting a diversified economy. Resources were also given on education, community facilities, markets, etc. And um, there is also allocation to the continuing education fund. In terms of sharing the fruits of success, some of our proposals were adopted, including um, um, salaries, tax, and um, rates. Waivers and exemptions, and there would be um, exemptions for or subsidies for the elderly, um, the and have not individuals, etc. And um, there, there is additional allowance on um, children, um, and there would and um, dental, um, elderly dental assistance, etc. Land revenue has been um, satisfactory. The um, surplus um, amounted to 138 billion dollars. Before the budget was announced, the public had expectations of um, sharing the fruits of success. So um, in our communications with the government, including um, the FS, we reminded the FS that you have to benefit everyone. But the budget was disappointing in this regard. And um, the scope covered it was too narrow, and eventually, the FS um, accepted the views of the public and um, decided to offer four thousand um, dollars to everyone in a caring and sharing scheme. As for um, there are um, there is some um, confusion on how much they can benefit, and some people hope that the um, money can be handed out soon, while others um, feel that the government should save administrative costs by streamlining the procedures. But at the end, the um, I think the sharing, caring, and sharing scheme um, puts an end to the um, turmoil. And now uh, the CY Learn, uh, the um, Kerry Lam administration stressed that. Um, it's important to adopt a new fiscal philosophy. In um, paragraph 47, 48, and 49, the budget talked about the new fiscal philosophy. You talked about the um, public expenditure policy, um, be proactive, enhancing services, improving the tax regime, and um, Sharing and caring and financial prudence. And um, how about the um, appropriation this year? Apart from recurrent expenditure, the um, greatest expenditure lies in the um, three hundred billion dollars for the second ten-year um, hospital development plan, and fifty billion dollars has been earmarked for innovation and technology, and twenty billion to improve culture and leisure facilities, and for nine billion dollars to support schools, students and um, teachers and five eight point five billion dollars to the CEF and um, eight billion dollars to improve district facilities and six billion dollars of recurrent expenditure for the hospital authority to recruit locally uh, local medical graduates and um, five billion dollars to the um, elite athletes fund. If you ask the public, whether there are um, concrete examples to showcase a new fiscal philosophy, I'm sure you cannot find any. And I hope that the FS can embrace the new philosophy by considering the needs of our society and um, alleviating the um, deep-rooted conflicts. So uh, I hope the FS can explain more about your new fiscal philosophy. Looking at the um, 
appropriation for the eight items I mentioned, or the eight top expenditure items, I'm sure the public would agree that additional resources are needed to improve the health care system. I'm sure the public wants to see more resources. Promotion of innovation, technology, improvement of cultural and educational facilities, I'm sure the community will support them. But the question that follows is, you have reserved money, but what specific measures do you have to enhance services? For instance, $300 billion is reserved for hospital development. How much improvement can we see in terms of health care services to the public? These indicators are not included in your budget. Just to quote two examples, uh, for instance, uh, we support the uh, boosting and capacity of our public health care system because in all on all public holidays, uh, there will be a lot of news about how um, our a&E departments are overloaded. All right. Para 139 to 145 of the budget. There is nothing in here to talk about how um, services to the public can be improved. For instance, a few years down the road, when can we help by how far can the waiting time for a general outpatient or and special outpatient uh, services be shortened? And uh, the long waiting time at A&E departments on public holidays, how far can that be shortened? And that example is information technology. As we know, the administration wants to catch up. It's going to uh, spend huge resources in information in innovation technology. Last year, it gave $10 billion, and this year, another $50 billion. We look at Para 65 through 75, uh, the uh, Luperia, the INT Fund, uh, the uh, Science and Technology Pass Corporation, Cyberport, eSports, uh, R&D, Reindustrialization Technology Voucher Program in INT Talent, so and so forth. After reading these paragraphs, if if you ask the public uh, oh, what is the significance to them, I don't think they can feel the significance. We have invested so much in innovation technology, but in terms of the many pressing issues we face, how would the administration use technology to overcome them? Uh, take a traffic congestion as example, many cities have introduced INT to address uh, this problem and to deal with shortage in car parking spaces. We have spent so much money, but we do not see anything in the budget to see how NT can be used to solve traffic congestion. E-payment, we are very backward. We have invested so much. But when can we see a big leap forward in terms of e-payment so that our um, habit and lifestyle can be changed, bringing more opportunities to our young people and the business sector? I do not see any indicators. So uh, the budget has reserved resources for various policy areas but have not set objectives for enhancement in services. And there is no blueprint and road map given that there is nothing in here. If you ask the public after reading the budget, are you confident that 10 and 5 years down the road, what will be our public health care sector like? And what will be the implementation of INT in Hong Kong? Uh, it appears that we cannot answer these questions. I hope that uh, this new fiscal philosophy and this new style of governance can be bolder to take care of the needs of the public in, and provide indicators for provision of uh, needed services to the public to reflect the effectiveness of your administration. This is my 10th year in this council on the budget debate. And this is the first time I uh, went to Beijing as a delegate of the CPPCR, CPPCC. I uh, listened to a report uh, from uh, President Xi, and I have very different feelings. Uh, I was in uh, the People's uh, uh, Hall in Beijing, and this year is a very special year. It's the first of Five of a new five-year plan and its 40th anniversary of the opening up of the country. So every five years, they will produce a five-year plan, eight 
five-year plan some role. Our country has grown from poverty to an affluent society. So after eight five years five year plan, we have um, made uh, astounding achievements in the country. Whereas in Hong Kong, we rarely have medium and long term planning, and rarely do we have any. A review of uh, or a report card for the past in the policy address and the budget speech. Well, I was listening to uh, the report in Beijing, and I was very confident that in the coming five years, the objectives could be achieved. In Hong Kong, it is uh, very different. I understand that the um, C and the FS are very uh, dedicated to their work, but. I have to ask these questions. With so much resources spent into uh, different areas, how much can our uh, public health care improve? And uh, uh, what, how will the waiting time for a subsidized RCG place be reduced? I hope that we can learn from our country in uh, delivering their five year plans. They also produce a report card of uh, what they have done in the past uh, five years. Now, um, I think uh, sentiments in society have eased, tensions have eased. I'm sure the CNFS has done a lot, and uh, the public know that. Meanwhile, the uh, central government has also um, tried to uh, crack down on advocates of uh, independence of Hong Kong, and uh, the efforts have uh, borne fruits. This term of government has worked very hard, and we should give credit where credit is due, in particular in improving the economy and improving uh, business environment. I think they've been very positive. They have um, leverage on the opportunities brought about by the um, Belt and Road Initiative and uh, the Bay Area. Now, uh, Ms. Chen um, is always uh, attending um, Meetings on behalf of the FS as acting secretary, and also the C has also delivered her undertakings in her electioneering, and he has uh, she has cut taxes for SMEs. Well, I give credit to where credit is due, but I have to criticize uh, what uh, they have not done so well. In particular, they haven't uh, delivered uh, on. Uh, Promises to provide housing for the public. If you ask the community, they will tell you that their top concern is housing. Our property prices are among the highest in the world. Even if we do not spend anything on food and clothing, it takes 50 years of our earnings to afford a home. And 10 months have elapsed. Well, uh, what have you done in terms of uh, uh, of uh, dampening of um, the uh, property market. Now, the waiting time for PRH unit, uh, well, it's long. We have uh, only 5,000 PRH flats produced per year. The supply can never catch up with demand. This Friday, uh, the task force on land supply will start a big debate. Honestly speaking, I'm very disappointed with this approach. After many rounds of debate, we come to a conclusion before. Uh, implementation. This government will only have a term of five years after the big debate. Can really can there really be a marked improvement in housing supply or land supply? I really uh, uh, I'm not sure. In fact, uh, recommendations or s proposals are bound to meet with uh, support as well as uh, objection. If we have uh, to have rounds of debate, I'm sure we will not be able to move forward. Uh, land aside, uh, Dr. Law is here. I have to uh, say that my uh, great disappointment and dis dissatisfaction is in uh, the care for the elderly. In the special FC, I asked uh, the Secretary for Labor and Welfare this question uh, for elderly persons aged between 65 to 70, can they be given uh, um, OH allowance? Uh, Without any means test, and he said, 
he answered very honestly that the answer is no, because we don't have、uh, retirement protection yet, and we have、uh, to do it. Gradually, when we have sufficient、uh, surplus and reserves, we should think for the elderly more. Secretary, I know you are very concerned about、uh, RCHs、uh, for the elderly, but for those who are aged 65 and 70, I think they really deserve OH pension without any means test. But you say no; it's just a little bit more than a thousand dollars. Your time is up, Mr. Sari Lee. Mr. Tommy Chung. Uh, the uh, reaction to the first budget of this government is mixed.、Uh, there are different views on how to、uh, share the fruits of economic development with the community. Anyway, the LP is of the view that the budget、um, has、uh, got many measures that take care of、uh, the middle class. Many of the measures are actually、uh, in line with、uh, the proposals of the LP, and this is welcoming. LP welcomes the. FS acceptance of our proposal, the、uh, salary band is increased from fifty forty five thousand to fifty thousand dollars, and instead of four bands, there will be、uh, five salary bands. I think this is good news to the middle class. Will help to ease、uh, some of their burden. However, on the proposal for profits tax,、uh, we are disappointed. Although there will be a two、uh, band, two tax bands, it has not. Resolve to the regional、um, profits tax rates of fifteen percent. When the government had financial hardship, the、um, commercial sector agreed to raise the profits tax to sixteen point five percent, and then、uh, the、uh, rate will be restored to the old level when our finances improved. That got the consent of the then FS. Now we should lower the profits tax rate to attract overseas investment. However, the government has turned a deaf ear to our calls, and the business sector is extremely disappointed. Another、uh, fourth flaw in the budget is、uh, there is no exemption、uh, for licenses uh, uh, for restaurants,、uh, for hawkers, and.、Uh, Fresh provisions shop. Many small hawkers and SMEs cannot benefit、uh, from tax concessions. Well,、uh, they can only benefit from、uh, rates concession. This year, we have seen a record high surplus, and yet they've been left out. And I think the government doesn't understand the difficulties faced by SMEs. Restaurants, in particular, face high and high operating costs. And I think uh, uh, the boss of a small enterprise is working harder than his employees. Sometimes, because of manpower shortage, the whole family have to work in、uh, doing dishes, cleaning up the、uh, washrooms in their restaurant, and、uh, the public. Is asking for、um, standard working hours, a statutory minimum wage, and more paternity leave, and to align、um, the number of、uh, public holidays and statutory holidays. I think SMEs are finding it very hard to survive, and wages are getting higher and higher. And、uh, many young people rather be、uh, security guards or in the construction sector where wages are high. So there is a severe shortage of manpower in the、uh, catering industry. Luckily,、uh, there is mention of importation of talents in the budget. This goes to show that the FS understands that the manpower shortage is so serious in Hong Kong that it is stifling our economic development. But then the secretary sitting behind you, FS, may still be think about abolition of the offsetting arrangement. He has never considered importation of labor. I see him smiling at me now, and I think other departments have never considered this proposal, and no specific timetable and implementation details have been submitted. This is disappointing. Many. Or other sectors such as、uh, commercial drivers,、uh, care workers in RCHs. I think their problem is more serious than the catering industry. 
for cross-boundary drivers. Now, if we can relax the requirement and allow more commercial drivers from across the boundary to come to Hong Kong, this can be a great help already. I have great uh, admiration for the uh, efficiency unit. In the past, when the ombudsman identified problems, then, then uh, the government departments would involve the relevant uh, industries to make improvements to improve the efficiency of different departments. But I don't know why this year the efficiency unit is going to be uh, subsumed under the IT, IT Bureau. I'm very disappointed. Don't think that uh, by the adoption of INT you can uh, improve business environment. And now liquor licensing system is uh, is uh, operated on the basis of controlling uh, vice. And the LLB would uh, impose more and more uh, stringent conditions. So if the government doesn't change its mindset, uh, the adoption of uh, technology and innovation wouldn't help. Actually, the, uh, the EU and the Business uh, Facilitation uh, Unit have been providing a good platform to deregulate and to uh, streamline procedures. And one of the measures adopted in the past is a good example of business facilitation. Uh, uh, restaurants with good records were, are now given a two-year license instead of one. And there should be more uh, epic, more uh, more cases of uh, extension of a license period, uh, so as to reduce the workload of government departments. Therefore, I don't know why the EU has to be uh, taken away from this uh, mechanism. I just hope that. Uh, after the structural change, uh, the the uh, business facilitation unit uh, uh, would not just be uh, looking for the INT related solutions in helping business. The government says uh, they have adopted a new style of govern governance. I hope uh, the en Environment Bureau and uh, the VHD would change its uh, carrot and stick uh, policy. Don't think that by imposing a high tariff, you can uh, reduce uh, waste and pollution. You have not been doing enough to educate the public on how to do the sorting and recycling properly. In the past, or twenty or odd years, uh, we have been uh, applying the. Polluter pays or user pays principle, and that's, that's uh, the the way we uh, want uh, want people to uh, pay for their services. But should we uh, apply the same to the police? Would uh, anyone reporting uh, a case to the police uh, be required to pay a fee first? I want to talk about three major social issues first: uh, the deliberate problem of housing. Issues. There are two problems, and that is uh, the living environment for low-income earners is getting worse and worse. The waiting list for PRH is longer and longer. Secondly, let's let let's help our young people to get uh, proper housing. We should uh, step speed up the uh, uh, p public housing program, and second, we should improve the uh, progression at uh, the uh, progress housing ladder. So for for the land identified in the immediate uh, future, they should be used for public sector housing such as uh, green form HOS, PRH, so as so that we can get more flats to be allocated to the waiting list applicants. Would this affect the private property market? I'm not worried that they own the private developers in Hong Kong own many land, only many sites. So we should. Uh, uh, let them uh, fi find a way out. Uh, they they certainly know how to do this. Let's uh, speed up the public housing uh, development program. And now, the, some uh, parents uh, would ask their children not to work so that they would not exceed the income limit of PRH. 
this would uh, mean that fewer young people are working. What can we do about this? And second, uh, this uh, said that there's a study on uh, how to set the uh, prices of uh, HOS, and that and this said that it will no longer be packed to market prices. In order that the middle class will not uh, cry foul that this is unfair, you should uh, allow uh, assist. You should implement a system whereby the sell the HOS once sold uh, would. Uh, we involve a sharing of proceeds with the government. I know that reclamations may affect people's homes in that the views may be blocked, but we should look look for easier solutions. For example, after the relocation of Sartin to water treatment plants, the land can be used to build housing. For people, but then uh, the the trans the traffic there would become worse, and then maybe a t in the future tail back from Shatin to Taipo. Why don't we the follow the the pattern we adopted for um, Discovery Bay so that a vehicular access is uh, restricted in the new development? So the government should not rely on the. Uh, a demand side uh, management measures. Uh, that's those uh, measures are not effective in the curbing property prices, and it was certainly not good enough to solve the problem of uh, shortage of housing supply. Let me, let me now turn to uh, the second major issues, uh, which is a uh, concern to the Liberal Party, and that is uh, health care. Uh, the government has promised that uh, a local medical graduates uh, would be, be employed a hundred percent. This is a, a new approach, an innovative approach, and some people are concerned that if we allow overseas trained doctors, their employment prospects will be affected. I think the guarantee would go some way to allay that concern. We should implement a ten-year hospital development. Program expeditiously, but it's not good enough just to have hardware, but no software. Many uh, private hospitals have been uh, trying to poach, has has been poaching the doctors from the public sector. The government should find an effective solution. The Liberal Party has suggested that we should follow the Singaporean practice, and that is, there should be a list of uh, all of uh, recognized. Uh, Medical institutions providing training to medical uh, graduates so that their graduates can be uh, employed by public sector uh, hospitals, and then, then uh, they can uh, apply for full registration. This would uh, make it more attractive uh, to the overseas trained uh, doctors, especially the uh, children of uh, Hong Kong the people who are trained overseas. That the relevant uh, options should be implemented expeditiously to to serve the community. Uh, Five hundred million dollars have been uh, earmarked uh, to help uh, the HA services, but uh, now the uh, there's a lot of bureaucracy in the seven clusters of the HA. They have all their own governing. Uh, Bores their own drug formularies. From the time a medicine is registered, from the to the time it can be used, there's a lead time of twenty three to forty months. If the management style is not changed to keep up with the times, then the medic healthcare service can never be really improved. Now let me turn to education. Uh, we have been paying attention to the student suicide and uh, emotional problems uh, of our students. The government is going to the improve uh, social work in schools uh, through a school-based uh, approach, so that there will be a, a social worker in every school. The Liberal Party, of course, su supports this proposal. These are counselors to be employed uh, would be would have a degree in uh, psychology and counseling, and they also go to schools. 
uh, to do the practicum. So they are not no different from social workers in uh, in their service and uh, capabilities. In the special FC, I raise a question, and that is: uh, school should not be asked to, to dismiss uh, ex incumbent uh, counselings bef before introducing uh, social workers. We should uh, make it a policy that every school should have uh, one counsellor or one social worker to handle the emotional the issues faced by the students and parents. Uh, Ms. Claudia Mo, it is said that uh, the uh, public coffers are is now flooded with uh, money. Uh, it's because of the land high land premium we have got from land sales, and uh, in in selling land, we uh, sell at the highest price. That's the high land premium policy, and many of the successful buyers are. Mainland uh, consortia, the uh, the so-called red capital, and then when they buy land at high premium, uh, it would certainly sustain the high land premium policy. But at the same time, we say that we have a shortage of land supply. We don't have sufficient land for p public housing, and now, Mister. Uh, Ma of MTRC said that we should uh, provide housing on the mainland to facilitate further integration with the mainland. So you are going to the do things the mainland way, uh, re resulting in the loss of our Hong Kong identity. So, in the name of land acquisition, uh, our public uh, financial policy will be affected, and it is said that uh, there's no uh, no prohibition of land acquisition by mainland developers, and even the Mr. Lee Ka Singh said that he could not compete with. Um, Mainland players, you claim to have a new philosophy in uh, managing public finances. How new is this? We see a black hole there, and uh, whatever new thinking and philosophy you might have adopted is still the same black hole. You say you have a new guiding uh, principle, a new philosophy, and uh, you uh, are doing everything to the ridicule the. Former financial secretary, Mr. John Zhang, saying that he he was a miser and he uh, kept talking about uh, Article One O Seven of Basic Law, so that uh, there should be a fiscal balance, and then he he who was a miser. And when we ask you to give a hand to dish out money, it's because uh, there's no trust in the government. If you talk about trend, uh, development for the next twenty to thirty years, I have no confidence. There's so many white elephant projects, the uh, Hong Kong Joint Macau Bridge, the XRL, and you said the world this this request cannot be a, a could not be acceded to. And now the, and the, you have make a new turn, saying that uh, you are going to give everyone a handout, and uh, even by giving a handout, you manage to attract. Ever's comments. Well, this is from the Stan News uh, website, comparing the two uh, exercises to give handouts. And this on this side, this is what uh, Mr. Paul Chan is suge has suggested. Uh, you can only apply in February next year. And the latest uh, option is to give everyone four thousand dollars to everyone. And you can uh, ask for the, uh, the uh, difference if you are giving a, a rebate in race, which is under four thousand dollars. So there, you a lot of uh, processing is required to work out the difference, and uh, it would incur uh, 
three hundred and thirty million dollars in uh, am administrative costs. I think you owe Mr. John Chang an apology since you have done a, such a poor job. Ms. Claudia Mo, I remind you that um, you should speak to the president. So please be careful in your words when you say you. Um, well, I am not in the capacity to give out any cash. As I, you refers to the government officials, but um, in the legislative council you are speaking to me. So you should refer to the government as the government. Just now, um, the government has a so-called dream team, which means they are daydreaming. This is about their power. This is about powers and interests. Every year, the biggest expenditure item is invariably education. But um, some of the expansion items are peculiar. For example, an um, international exchange program in 2017 to 18. On international exchanges, some um, 350 people took part, and in 2018 to 19, it will reach more than $1,000 in terms of expenditure. In the past, the expenditure was $5 million, and now um, it has tripled to $15 million. The baseline is very low. For mainland exchange programs, about um, twenty people, twenty thousand people took part, um, amounting to thirty-six million. And now um, the number of participants would rise slightly, and the expenditure increasing to forty million dollars. There's another program for mainland internship, thirty-four hundred thousand. 3,400 3, people took part with an expansion of $75 million. And um, in the new year, 3,600 people would take part, and the expansion will rise to over $100 million. So um, the expansion will go up by more than 25%. So um, how do you manage your finances? The budget for international exchanges is so meager, while for mainland exchanges, there is a substantial Budget. This is hard to imagine, and I'm sure everyone can see your intentions. When we talk about education for the historical textbooks, um, the um, controversy arose from a finance committee special meeting in a dialogue with the Secretary for Education. So suddenly he was being politically correct in saying that um, Hong Kong's sovereignty was never um, re returned or resumed, which was peculiar. In the year 1842, um, the Hong Kong island was um, ceded to the um, British government, and that was the Nanking Treaty. And in the year 1860, in the, for the Kowloon Peninsula to the south of the Boundary Street, it was perman permanently um, ceded. You stress that um, for the government, the um, basic law made it clear that um, mainland China only resumed the um, sovereignty of Hong Kong, and there was never any transfer of sovereignty. So please do not be delusional. So parents have a headache on what textbooks to buy. If you say that China never acknowledged the um, unfair treaty signed in the Qing Dynasty, so on the 1st of July 1997, what happened in Hong Kong? And um, wasn't that a um, return of sovereignty? Carrie Lam said that um, we should be accurate in our wording and we um, should not be biased, but she is the one who is biased. Does she know what history means?
in the colonial um, period, um, she was a senior government official. And um, in the now, in the name of education, three hundred million dollars was given to Ocean Park to promote um, eco tourism. Ocean Park is a statutory body which is self financing. If you say they are Hong Kong People's Park, well, the person who said this is not here now. You said that Ocean Park is Hong Kong People's Park and they deserve help. How about Hong Kong People's um, Dai Pai Dong or um, tea cafes? If they are not doing well, are you going to support them? You talked about eco tourism. But the fact is, we have plenty of um, destinations. For example, Wetland Park. You you should vis visit our wetlands, and it's better than um, visiting um, um, captured animals. We are entering a new era. Many major cities in the world have closed down their marine parks, and you are asking our students to watch dolphin shows and um, how. Um, the encaged animals live and eat. This is just unacceptable. And you are saying that um, within the three hundred million dollars, it would help um, promote our biggest um, visitors market, which is mainland China. In the last ten years, a lot of Hong Kong people were reluctant to visit Ocean Park because they were scared by mainland. Tourists, and now you are encouraging more of them to come, and um, you are putting um, the cart before the horse. The um, three hundred million dollar allocation to Ocean Park is um, incredible. It should not be given. And um, you are giving um, three billion dollars for a new innovation and technology park. And um, <coughs> um, does the three billion dollar allocation include um, research involving um, ex animal experiment experiments? And um, you said the matter would be discussed at the um, Commerce Industry Panel, and and then the Finance Committee. Again, some um, this is um, unimaginable. We are at a new era, and. Um, Experiments involving animals should be minimized. F for some cases, um, for example, um, drugs um, involving um, AIDS or, um, or or that are critical, um, white mice might be deployed, and that is another issue. But for um, experiments, including um, involving cosmetics, um, they are still being conducted in the mainland. They mandate that all imported cosmetic products must un undergo animal experiments. Um, apparently, they um, sound like the mainland standards are even higher. But um, the government said that the um, three billion dollar allocation to the innovation technology park would not involve um, animal experiments, but um, low. Um, Hong Kong universities might still be conducting these experiments. Can you provide me with the figures? We should not underestimate the pains of our animals. We talk about animal welfare. Well, we are talking about animal rights, not just animal welfare. Last year, they did not provide the figures. In the four years before, more than 1,000 cats and dogs were involved. This is how um, hypocritic mankind is. We are classifying different uh, animals. Um, some people find it all right to eat um, cows and goats. So these are new standards of the uh, new age. And how could these um, standards be implemented for the um, measures against cruelty towards animals according to the budget? They are using this ordinance. To um, make it look like um, Hong Kong is not so cruel to animals, and 
so for stray animals or what I call community animals. And um, there were 33 million, which is um, 11 times. So you can see that um, animal rights are not held in high regard by the government. Well, um, the government would ignore um, um, problems um, or questions raised by people, but um, they would take very hard action against people who raise the questions. Animals should enjoy equal rights just like humans, Mr. Ronick Chan. President, in the budget um, this year, for the 17 to 18 financial year, there's a surplus which is a record setting $138 billion, and the um, reserves would um, amount to $1,092 billion and about um, $52 billion would be shared. The rest would be um, invested into the future, including developing INT, consolidating pill industries, nurturing talent, investing in infrastructure, and enhancing our competition as well as improving livelihood. Subsequently, um, there were strong calls from the community to um, ex to um, expand the sharing of the fruits of success. And um, the government came up with a sharing and caring scheme. And after announcing these supplementary measures, the um, sweeteners would amount to $64 billion, which is a record high with the um, Hefty surpluses. The government is happy to share the fruits with the people, but they are um, creating a happy problem for themselves, which was unexpected. Nonetheless, the budget would benefit the people and it would also benefit our long term development. I'd like to talk about the treatment on the um, financial surplus, long term financial planning, and development of the financial services industry. As for the uh, handling, of the um, surplus last year, the IMF um, published a fiscal monitor report in the um, 35 advanced economies monitored in 2017. Only 15 were expected to record a surplus, and the Hong Kong surplus amounted to 5.2 percent of the GDP, which was top of the list. In the last 10 years, only Hong Kong, Korea, Norway, and Singapore recorded surpluses every single year. Many governments have taken out debts in, to um, develop their economies, but um, in the 20 years since the handover, the SAR government has adopted a um, prudent financial approach. And e even um, with the miss, um, with the um, wrong um, forecasts, the um, surpluses have been um, f healthy with um, SARS or. There were two hundred billion dollars worth of surplus, and the um, surplus um, increased from four hundred billion in nineteen ninety seven to um, seventy one thousand billion. Um, with the if we do not include the um, one hundred twenty billion dollars in this consolidated accounts, um, there are um, two thousand billion dollars of. Um, usable um, surpluses. Some people say that we are facing a structural surplus, and the budget shows that the SAR government is committed to investing in the future. They are embracing a new fiscal philosophy, and that um, fulfills my expectations from a year ago. The government, um, for, for public expenditure, they plan to um, Relax it slightly from twenty percent of GDP to twenty one percent, and in twenty seventeen the GDP was some um, two thousand six hundred sixty billion dollars. So um, the public expenditure was twenty six point six billion dollars. Hong Kong um, does not lack financial resources. We should update our um, public finance philosophy, and we should use our surplus on housing infrastructure. Um, elderly services, education, etc., to enhance our overall competitiveness and improve living quality and health for Hong Kong people. 
and that way we can instill hope with the hefty surplus the um this is a prime opportunity for us to explore whether we should set a cap on the um, fiscal surplus so any um portions exceeding the surplus um could be put into more aggressive planning in order to solve the um the different issues like housing let me stress uh, of course uh a reserve is never too much. The crux of the matter is how we use it properly. We should uh, not uh, just uh, be satisfied with wealth um, management. Uh, the government is managing public finances and also wealth accumulated by the community over the years. I hope the government have a long, uh, forward-looking and strategic uh, mindset in managing our finances so that money can be well spent to relieve the hardship of the people. Now, how can we ensure the fiscal healthy development of Hong Kong? It is something we have to face up to. Well, because of uh, the year-after-year year surplus, uh, we have uh, weaknesses in our fiscal system, and they are not easy to tackle. Because our tax base is too narrow, we rely too heavily from income from land because of our simple and uh, low taxation system, our tax base cannot be widened. In 2015, 16, 51% of uh, income earners didn't have to pay taxpayers. And 5% of the taxpayers accounted for over 63% of the total income from tax. And we had 91% of uh, registered companies not having to pay profits tax. For corporate taxpayers, 5% of them accounted for 86% of uh, the profit tax income. So when we have a huge surplus, there would be tax concessions, and that would further uh, narrow our uh, tax base. There is no easy solution. When we have new taxes that would uh, change uh, the attractiveness of our low and simple taxation system, that contributes to our competitiveness. And when we have a surplus year after year, and if we widen the tax base, there would also be controversies. Controversial this subject is the government should uh, face the challenges and consider introducing new taxes such as a uh, property vacancy tax proposed recently. And uh, we have also liabilities uh, such as a public pension fund and also capital works uh, uh, accounts not yet settled, so and so forth. However, these uh, items do not have uh, to be drawn down in one year. The drawn down period is very low and is very long. Therefore, the government should look at the uh, residual uh, financial resources after deducting these liabilities and make good use of the balance. A dedicated reserve fund should be set up so that we can have long term investment of excessive surpluses. And every year, we have uh, cash reserves, and the uh, land and properties owned by the government should be included. GPA um, is managing over 20,000 uh, units uh, and over 100,000 square meters of land and offices. And there are also government canteens, car parks, uh, ATM, um, and also uh, advertising sports that also produce revenue. That means we have over $2 trillion that we can spend. And therefore, we could make good use of our surplus and assets to uh, tackle long-term financial challenges brought about by our aging population. We should have our own uh, asset management fund. In the past few years, uh, we have seen uh, rapid growth in sovereignty funds. According to an assessment, in 2016, sovereignty funds are uh, worth over 7.2 trillion U.S. dollars. The Norwegian sovereignty fund has got uh, income from oil and also official reserves because of import-export of oil. It has got surplus. Uh, the income from the fund would fund a future pension payments and health care. In 19, starting from 1996, the money has been invested in high yield projects. In 2017, uh, the income was one trillion U.S. dollars, accounting for 
15.7% is uh, invested in stocks and also bonds and also strategic projects. A few years ago, $220 billion of land fund and also income from a uh, land into a future fund. And uh, the Hong Kong Army is tasked uh, to invest the fund for higher returns. However, uh, the government should take reference from uh, the example in Norway to make use of our reserves uh, more productively, and we should learn from them. We have uh, different types of small funds. However, this budget or the budget has never uh, give us, given us an account of uh, the sustainability of these funds. Year on year, we invested in uh, funds, for instance, uh, $10 billion on INT fund, athlete, uh, elite athlete development fund, uh, Ten uh, five billion dollars, and also uh, to help SMEs uh, to uh, promote their market. Another ten, another one billion dollars, so and so forth. The government should consider consolidating uh, different funds for investment. It is better than uh, asking individual funds to. Uh, take care of their own investment. Hong Kong may should be asked to uh, take care of the investment. And uh, these funds uh, should seek to be self-financing and uh, long term uh, in the long term. I'd like to talk about uh, our efforts in um, helping uh, the financial services sector. The uh, a financial uh, college uh, is proposed uh, to enhance our strength in this area, and there is support for development of green finance. A hundred and a hundred billion dollars, a green fund will be set up for uh, green bonds, and the government will support eligible organizations that issue bonds in Hong Kong for the first time to attract. Uh, overseas institutions to do this in Hong Kong. There will also uh, be um, other measures. So in addition to uh, those uh, instruments uh, managed by the Hong Kong MA, uh, the, uh, those listed with SFC will be included. However, $500 million is reserved for use in the coming five years. This is far from adequate. In the coming five years, uh, the financial uh, sector should encourage development in uh, this area and we should in fintech and we should look at the opportunities to be brought uh, by the Belt and Road Initiative and the Greater Bay Area. The Greater Bay Area is of critical significance on our future development. Among the 11 uh, cities in the uh, Bay Area, Hong Kong and Macau are very internationalized. Uh, we are uh, an independent customs entity and a uh, free port. For the remaining nine cities, now they are already major investment areas for multinational corporations and the world's uh, biggest uh, manufacturing Base. However, these nine cities are not yet fully uh, internationalized. Uh, nine plus two cities can be divided into th four, two or three different areas. There is no free flow of information, uh, talent, and capital. The development of uh, the Great Bay Area uh, has this difficulty of uh, institutional um, innovation. We have to insist on one country, two systems. For instance, for residents living in Hong Kong, Macau, and Guangdong, if they would like to set up accounts and investment accounts in uh, different cities, uh, it is very difficult. They have uh, to fulfill the very stringent eligibility criteria and the access uh, conditions. Now, if we can liberalize the access restrictions, this will facilitate effective management of assets of residents in the Bay Area. And uh, for uh, those who would like to take out loans or a mortgage guarantee from Hong Kong, well, they will be regarded as uh, foreign debts and they will be subject to 
such restrictions. Now, if all costs of financing and loan guarantee and mortgage uh, can uh, be regarded, no longer regarded as foreign debt, and if enterprises can uh, have all sorts of financing activities in the 11 cities of uh, the Greater Bay Area, this will greatly facilitate the movement of capital within the region. Well, I don't know how much resources we have to invest into uh, this initiative, but if we uh, reserve sufficient funds in the budget, we can help uh, the early implementation of these measures. Among many world economies, there are only very few that can have continuous surpluses. In Hong Kong, every year we are uh, arguing over how our surpluses uh, should be shared with the community. I hope this happy problem can continue. Thank you. Mr. Lang Chi Chang. President, the uh, main characteristic of this budget is handing out uh, goodies. People are uh, calculating how much uh, they can get from the budget. Uh, there is the uh, caring and sharing uh, scheme, and there are also other uh, measures. And I think the concept is just the same as to share the fruits of economic success with the community. DAB welcomes uh, this concept. Unfortunately, uh, the way uh, money is handed out is rather chaotic. I think I've heard uh, more uh, complaints and applause from the community. Fair, to be fair, no policy can be flawless. Whenever we have a new policy, uh, we have uh, to enhance it uh, with the passage of time, and usually the policy will then become um, better and uh, be able to satisfy the community more. This is not a novelty that um, money is given out to the community. In 2011, the then FS uh, gave out $6,000 to everyone who has a permanent ID card in Hong Kong. We spent about $200 million on that. This year, uh, the uh, scheme is much more complicated. Uh, there is vetting and the calculation of the difference, and uh, it will be uh, dispersed in phases. Even government officials, when they briefed the Welfare Services Panel on the 9th of April, they didn't know about the details of the scheme, not to mention members of the public. The scheme was meant to be a favor to the people, to please the people. But because of uh, the complicated arrange administrative arrangements, uh, the negative sentiments have um, caused the scheme to backfire, and uh, the, gov the public are rather negative of the government as a result. DB is of the view that uh, handing out cash should focus on the needy in the community. When the care and sharing scheme was announced, we made known our views to the FS. We should share the fruits of economic success with more people, and we should include um, PRH tenants, uh, people who are not eligible for a low-income allowance, and uh, those who uh, have just uh, started their career, young people have started their career, and also elderly persons. And for instance, we should pay rent uh, for PRH tenants. We should offer electricity tariff subsidy, and we urge uh, the CCF to launch new and specific relief measures as soon as possible. The eligibility criteria and threshold should be um, relaxed so that more uh, non-PRH tenants and low-income earners can also benefit. And we should also uh, relax the um, or we should review the uh, student financing uh, scheme. We have made a record high surplus over a hundred billion dollars this year. The government is in the best position to provide more for the disadvantaged and the elderly in the community. There should be long term commitment. Take uh, the care uh, subsidy scheme as an example. The idea is to provide financial support to carers of people with disabilities. An eligible carer will be given 
$2,000 per month. Now, if it is taking care of more than one uh, person with disability, the allowance will be doubled to $4,000. Most of these carers are family members of uh, PWDs, and they know best uh, the needs of uh, the PWDs. They're willing to take up the responsibility and give up their means of livelihood. And they are uh, taking care of their family members, but the work, in fact, is that of a care assistant. If the society has to uh, train up a care assistant, the cost is quite high. Uh, you know about the youth navigation program. Uh, from 15, 16 to 16, the SWD has trained up 1,000 young people. There are 1,000 places and to encourage young people to join the elderly and healthcare services. And in 2015, 16, 16, 17, the uh, expenditure is $24.7 million and $56.7 million. We've spent quite an amount, but the number of people joining the industry, Acts of October 2017, 465 trainees and 99 graduates were there. According to the uh, records, only 63 graduates will uh, join, will be employed by social welfare organizations. 30 of them are employed in healthcare and elderly and rehabilitation institutions. So in other words, the government has to spend $100 million to train up 1,000 uh, young people. So on average, over $140,000 for each person. And there is no guarantee that the graduates will necessarily join the uh, health care, uh, the, uh, the care sector, care services. So the government should not belittle the contributions of the carers no, whether it is the subsidy amount or the application threshold, the government must um, ex expand the uh, scope. Uh, it should increase the subsidy level so that the family of the PWD will not uh, plunge into financial difficulties and they have to save up, uh, deplete their savings, savings and apply for CSSA. That will only have a negative impact on the society in the long term. And also, the DAB has for years strived to uh, lower the age eligibility of fruit money to 65. We have made initial estimates for 65 to 69. There are 412,000 detecting 128,000 who are now on OALA. The eligible uh, elderly number, only 280,000. So the annual expenditure will be less than $4.6 billion. And if we un uh, make use of the estimated of amounts of $100 billion, is just 4% only. So if we can have some wild thoughts here, maybe for this over $100 billion of surplus, we can set up a dedicated fund, and we're paying $4.6 billion every year, then we can see that uh, we can uh, last for 20 years. For the fruit money or the OLALA, there is a limit on the uh, number of days uh, the elderly are away from Hong Kong. Uh, uh, the applicants have to uh, live in Hong Kong for th uh, 60 days, and they should not leave Hong Kong um, for over 305 days. This is to ensure that the elderly are here in Hong Kong. They want, don't want to. Uh, they don't want to uh, squander public money. They don't want abuses. Well, in fact, many residents have um, asked us. The many elderly are living on the mainland for a long uh, time, but in order to get the fruit money, they have to travel back and forth. Uh, 
and there's a, there's a nuisance to them. The government has implemented the Guangdong and Fujian scheme, but the elderly's ethnic or, um, origin comes from different provinces. And if the government has to implement, say, dedicated schemes for different provinces, and that is a really a um, waste of effort, I think the government should draw on the experience from the Guangdong and Fujian program and then try to uh, expand the coverage to all over China, and you should take away with the restriction of um, days uh, out of Hong Kong so that the elderly people can go back to their homeland and have a um, good retirement life. Now, this is what's being done in uh, overseas in Australia. As long as the elderly have lived there for 10 years, then every month they can uh, uh, have an um, portable allowance uh, given to them. So in other words, they can live in the 31 designated countries out of Australia to um, to continue receiving the subsidy. And there is no restriction on um, the elderly departing from the hometown. So in other words, the elderly, when they have uh, left Australia, they don't have to return to Australia to go through the vetting um, procedures. And the same goes for EU countries like um, Sweden. Now, elderly people um, in the 33 member states of uh, EU, and if they choose to live in another place, um, they can uh, um, enjoy healthcare uh, welfare benefits in Sweden. So these uh, aided elderly do not have to return to their home country, and all they need to do is every year they update the uh, their own status with the Sweden authorities. It's been 20 years since the reunification, but um, that we are adhering to the old rules in many livelihood policies, and it has hindered the development of Hong Kong and um, the main and our integration of the mainland. In 1997, we have the uh, welfare portability scheme already. Um, that was uh, the Guangdong scheme launched back then, and then in 2013, the uh, program has been expanded to Fujian. But then the scheme uh, doesn't dovetail with the healthcare facilities, and applicants have to uh, hand over their PRH units. So uh, that deters the elderly. Information shows from tw April 2014 and uh, December 2016, uh, 400 uh, elderly have um, withdrawn from the program, and 41 percent have come back to Hong Kong to get uh, medical services. Now, Shenzhen Hospital operates on a Hong Kong motto, and the elderly healthcare voucher uh, scheme starting from t October 2015, that can also be used in that hospital. But then there has not been much publicity on this, and if the elderly have to go through major surgeries, the uh, operating costs may be very exorbitant, and that uh, scares the elderly people off. Now, Hong Kong is facing an aging population. The elderly population is ever rising in Hong Kong. And in the long term, the government must think about allowing elderly people to retire outside of Hong Kong. The Bay Area is now, um, I mean, the planning for the Bay Area is going in full steam. And I think the um, Hong Kong government must expand the coverage of the uh, elderly health care scheme to uh, hospitals in Guangdong and Macau. And we must improve um, the situation so so the elderly in Hong Kong can uh, get good health care uh, services in Bay Area. Maybe we can uh, set up uh, hospitals jointly with the mainland authorities so that the retirees can have a re good retirement life in the mainland and they can get medical services, then they don't have to return to Hong Kong. The administration can think of some accounting measures to allow Hong Kong and Macau people living in the province when they use uh, the, lo the medical services there, they can pay the fees app applicable to the locals there. And the SAR government must can also uh, pay the relevant medical expenses to the Guangdong authorities so that our elderly can have enjoy their um, more choices in their twilight years. I so submit. Dr. Joseph Lee, President, my speech today 
is on how the budget can be aligned with the PA in order to help Hong Kong people. I will be um, talking about health, elderly services, and also housing. I'm happy to see the relevant secretaries seated in the chamber. In this budget, well, we have done our sums. About 580 million have been set aside, um, but then 500 billion cannot be used because that is for 10-year hospital development program and then 300 million will be for the next 10 years. Therefore, these are vague figures. Yesterday, the Health Services Panel consented to creating a post to look at the first 10-year building program. So that is still a vague figure. What we can see exactly for the recurrent use for the hospital authority and the Department of Health that would be around $72 billion. Out of that, uh, $62 billion for the hospital authority and then $10 billion for Department of Health. This is a $70 billion amount of recurrent expenditure for HA and the D of H. We welcome it. But then the biggest change is that the $62 billion, according to the administration and the FS, would be for recurrent expenditure. It will not be that today, um, this year, you have $62 billion, and then next year, if there is little money, you will have less, and then the year after that, if there is a lot of money, you have more. We will welcome more. This is going to be a three-year cycle for providing recurrent expenditure for the public hospital system. Then they can do some long-term planning. Even if you have $500 billion, it doesn't help even if you build all the hospitals because you don't have the manpower. Manpower is a kind of recurrent expenditure. People should not be dismissed after one year they are engaged. At least you shouldn't be doing that. Therefore, this kind of funding mode is welcomed by us. And with a three-year cycle, the HA will be able to draw up long-term plans. Apart from building plans, they can also make long-term plans for manpower provision. This year, you are given $62 billion. You have to add beds, services, and also operating room time. But then members are asking, does it mean that there will be shorter queues and shorter waiting time? Nobody has answered those questions. I'm quite worried. You are adding these things, but then you are adding also to people's workload. You are not doing very good manpower planning, so we lack manpower. But then you are telling people that you will have $62 billion in recurrent expenditure and the HA will be able to provide a lot of services. But remember, President and Secretary, well, the FS is not here. Services have to be delivered. If nobody delivers the service, there will be long waiting queues and the frontline workers will be um, reprimanded by the public. So the road to health may be paved with good intentions. We support this kind of recurrent expenditure. But at the same time, I hope the administration and the Food and Health Bureau will urge the uh, HA to look after manpower provision. Let us look at manpower provision. This time around, the CE has said that uh, she will tackle this 10-year-long phenomenon, and that is for workers who work in the HA for the first year and second year, you know, they do not have any increments. And now my hair is turning gray, and indeed I see some improvement. Now that we have the recurrent expenditure, well, that would take about $40 billion. Please, or $400 million. Please give them $400 million so that this year those who enter the HA for the first or second years will have an increment, but not those who are going to join the HA next year. You have to give them $400 million on a long-term basis so as to support those who work in the first year um, in the HA. That will be acceptable to us. Therefore, I hope FS even if you haven't heard us, your staff should be listening in. I hope you will always have this $400 million as recurrent expenditure for giving salary increments to people who work for the first year, or else the HA will use that as an excuse not to engage enough people. And I hope the FS will also listen to this. We have done statistics for the first three years. There are nurses leaving who are working for the first to the fifth years. Now there will be salary increments for the first and second years, and you are going to retain them because they will not feel aggrieved anymore 
because they also work very hard, so they will stay. But then the second um, span of years where people leave most would be from the sixth to the tenth years. The nurses will say they work very hard and they work doubly hard, but then they also have to do clinical supervision apart from their normal duties, and they have the intention to leave. We can see from figures that they take up 40 percent of all nurse wastage. When the HA was first um, incepted, uh, these people would enjoy an, a salary jump from 15 to 25 percent. But yeah, of course, now they have um, yearly increments, but then when they're at point 17, they may suddenly jump to point 21 so they can be retained. Nurses don't set their eyes on money, but now you don't have enough manpower and you have the money, so please give them more salary so when they have also a heavier workload. Let us try to um, revert that phenomenon. As I said, you have $500 billion for hospital building. There will be many more hospitals in the future, but I don't know about the manpower complement. According to the HA figures, they will be engaging 820 nurses this year. Are you only going to fill the vacancies, or do you have enough nurses to provide new services? If they are for both, we will clap our hands, but I don't think so. You have 820 nurses coming on stream, but does it mean you will really satisfy the um, nurse-patient ratio of one to six, they dare not answer. And it's not just hospital nurses. You also have community nurses who are working hard. We have seen from one reply that next year they will do 5,000 more home visits next year. And you need people to do those home visits. And does it mean that community nurses have to work overtime and they have to work also on Saturdays and Sundays. Again, they are going to work doubly hard. So FS, please face squarely uh, to this problem. Okay, apart from manpower provision, let me look at psychiatric services. You say there are many different kinds of services. Well, this has to be um, related to the secretary here. Please look at that. You have district services. You have one social worker and one nurse per school, and you also have um, correlation between medics and social workers. In fact, the year, uh, the day before last, we have a joint panel meeting talking about uh, psychiatric assessment for young people. There is a bottleneck from six to eight years for preschool. You can almost cope, but then from six to ten, when people are in the primary school, they have to wait, and then after waiting, they have to um, again wait for 36 months after assessment for treatment. So you need psychiatrists. Well, FS, I have said this many times. I don't know whether you know this. In, in September, talking about places for psychiatric students, there is a slash of 27 percent from 190 to 140. Well, it doesn't matter because you may think that if they enter the school this year, they will have five years and then, of course, by that time you are gone. But then there will be fewer than 140 psychiatric uh, students who will graduate. And then we also have a retirement wave. We also have a period of service growth. What are we going to do? I don't know. Let me talk about psychiatric services. Don't only look at services. You must also complement it with manpower planning, or else uh, you will not go very far. As for the D of H, well, I have been here for over a decade. There is uh, the most money that has been added to uh, the D of H because Mrs. Carrie Lam is saying that she would like to provide primary health care. But even so, you need to have people working at the D of H. They don't have a big um, manpower complement now, but now they also have to look after chronic illnesses, uh, disease management, health promotion, health education. You need people to do all that. I hope you will allow more manpower. Okay, President, you may get bored because I'm also bored. I have talk been talking about this for 10 years. And even if you have the money, it doesn't mean that it will all turn into manpower. You need training. You need recurrent expenditure given to them so that you can support service growth. And on. Um, health care, I'd like to compliment the administration on one thing. 
We understand that there is the Pilot Accredited Register Scheme for Healthcare Professions, or the AR scheme, and uh, you are going to provide speech therapists. But you have not told us um, that actually we need a lot of resources for that. If in this administrative supervision system you may have to set up an authority and they may have to hold hearings and conduct investigation, and hopefully you will set up the authority and then also finance it. This will reassure the industry, or else if Joseph Lee is investigated and then uh, it is said that my license will be suspended, then I need to have legal representation. And there must also be a legal advisor at the authority. I hope you will finance this AR scheme. Okay, I have spoken for over 10 minutes. I will speak on something related to the secretary here. I am not um, a, an expert here, but I like to talk about healthy services. Uh, you are spending $3.49 billion on this, but only 30% of it is for recurrent expenditure. In other words, over 60% is not for recurrent expenditure. It's good that you also give them the money, but this is only one off. Can we regularize the services? Secretary, please think about this. We are worried that, okay, you put the lump sum there, meaning there will be about $3.4 billion almost $4 billion for elderly services, but over half of that is non-recurrent. What happens next year? Can the services continue next year? The NGO, the SWD, and the um, medical social workers, nurses, and those who work in the elderly homes are worried whether you can really hire enough people. Don't just give them a one-off grant, start something, and then you walk away uh, the FS is not here, but I'm sure his staff are listening in because services have to have uh, sustainability or else uh, we are not reassured about elderly services. Let me talk about speech therapy for um, elderly people. There are $63 million for hiring speech therapists to help elderly people. But the sector is telling me this. We don't have enough speech therapists. You can actually hire 200 odd speech therapists to do this. But we are also concerned about the level of service, whether it is an NGO or the HA. We hope that there can be interface. And clinical service is what matters. I hope that when you give the money, you will also see that there will be quality clinical supervision. The sector wants to do this, but since you give the money to the NGO and uh, they may not be able to reach a certain level of service. Well, we are talking about people who may have swal swallowing difficulties and they have to be assessed. Well, we are at this age and it's still okay for, we, for us to um, swallow a sip of water, but 30 years down the road, if we cannot swallow a sip of water, we have to be assessed. And we want the service to be guaranteed. We hope that there will be a mode of delivery of service so that speech therapists will be reassured um, about the provision of the service. And then about the homes for the elderly, you are expanding it now, but it has been there for eight years. It is quite successful, I hope. Uh, you are not only going to extend it for some time, but make it continuous. As for the community care voucher scheme for elderly, we welcome it. However, again, there is money, but you need to have OTs and physiotherapists and nurses helping to provide the service in the community. If you do not have these uh, occupational therapists and physiotherapists and nurses, again, you are not going to be able to deliver the service. So after all, it's a matter of manpower. I won't talk too much about the health care voucher scheme. i just like you to prevent abuse. Again, I may be uh, talking too much about this, but then uh, let me talk about hearing impairment. It is um, normal that you have a hearing impairment when you age, but I don't think you have face squarely up to it. Uh, these hearing um, medics, well, we are just better than Africa. We have only 200 people in this, and I hope you will help the elderly. Uh, please help them hear more clearly. And uh, I'm not really asking too much, but please, Secretary, get some money for this. Last but not least, we like to talk about housing. I can't see the budget doing too much 
for housing, but rent control is something you really need to do. I, but I can't see any money being spent on this. I hope we can live and work happily in Hong Kong. Thank you. Mr. Frankie Yig, Madam Deputy, in drafting this budget, the uh, external environments were probably better when the FS drafted his budget. That's why he forecast an economic growth of 3 to 4 percent this year. But after the Chinese New Year, we see there is some visible, notable drop uh, in export volume. And then in recent days, um, the trade war between China and the U.S. Uh, is uh, escalating, you know, although um, nothing has come out of it yet. But, you know, um, we are beginning to see a change in um, export volume and uh, trade. those in the trade are concerned that if there is to be a, a sign of um, U.S. trade, all our relevant sectors will be hard hit. So I, we hope the financial secretary will pay attention, close attention to developments. If there should be a trade war between the China and the U.S., uh, we hope the government will come with certain measures to support the trades. In the 13th five-year plan, there is in Hong Kong Macau chapter, and um, that we are to be supported uh, to leverage on our advantages so we could um, um, and consolidate our um, conventional pillar industries, and also we must, we can promote uh, innovation, technological development. At the same time, with the Belt and Road Initiative and the Bay Road Area Development, uh, we could make the pie bigger. But whether Hong Kong could seize upon these opportunities, it depends on whether the government is prepared to plowing more resources to consolidate our advantages. With um, um, internet and mobile phones becoming more popular, and also there is um, vibrant development on the mainland, and in this respect in particular, so there is a um, rapid increase in the need for logistics services. Now, um, the logistics services now cover all ranges of goods, or even high-value uh, fresh food. and so to promote um, the trade and logistics to move in the direction of high value added services the uh, financial secretary announced in the budget that um, the um, declaration fee uh, will be kept at $200 so for high value goods coming in and out of hong kong um, they will enjoy this um, cap of declaration but if we want to further promote um, trade and uh, logistics industries the government needs to do more now, all along, we've had a shortage of land to supply for the realm of this industry, for the logistics industry. Um, and, but then there is a strong demand for fresh food and uh, pharmaceuticals. But in Hong Kong, we don't have the land for building cold storage for such goods. And also, we don't have the space for distribution and uh, handling of uh, cargo. So that's... And then the government often goes for the um, highest bidder wins a policy. So that's why land prices continue to go up, and then our competitive edge is, um, is reduced. In the 2014 budget, it was announced that in Tun Bun West, 10 hectares would be set aside for logistics industries. Uh, in area 49 of um, Tumbun, that's a site of 3.2 hectares. Finally, it's now made available for tender, but for the rest of the uh, sites, they're not yet available. But even for this 3.2 hectare site, uh, it will go to the highest bidder. Now, the government um, uh, has a, sur a surplus of $138 billion in, 1917, uh, in 2017 to 18, and we have a reserve of over... $1,100 billion. So we're not short of money. And then the financial secretary said that uh, we need to, of course, have um, a robust public finances. At the same time, we need to be forward-looking. And we need to have vision. So the government should always put development first. So um, and there are other sites that can be used for logistics uh, purposes, say, in Hong Shui Kiu, and also uh, in the superstructure of the Hong Kong Joy Macau Bridge. Um, artificial island. So this site should be put on the market soon, as uh, and as soon as practic practicable, actually. And also the government should change its uh, policy of uh, um, giving the sites to the highest bidders. And then there should be planning, too, on such sites, so there will be a government uh, warehouse uh, with uh, rates affordable to the industry.
in 2017, our um, um, cargo uh, container throughput has again reached uh, $20 million. Now, Hong Kong is ranked fifth in the world, but compared to the Busan port uh, of South Korea, which is ranked sixth, uh, the difference is only 270,000 um, TEU. As for the Huaizhou port, uh, the difference is only 40,000 TEU. Uh, and as I mentioned at the beginning, if uh, there should be um, Sino-U.S. trade war, Hong Kong's ranking may slip to the seventh or even ninth places. Now, and of course, uh, we ha have much higher costs compared to Shenzhen and other ports of the mainland. And then we're seeing rapid development uh, in on mainland ports, and many mainland goods are now shipped out directly from the mainland. So as we uh, develop ports and relevant services, we must also develop a high-end um, shipping and logistics services. Now in Hong Kong, we have some 800 shippers, um, and uh, all those involved in the shipping industry. We have uh, brokers, we have agents, and other service providers in the maritime industry. And they uh, bring about uh, $30 billion of uh, economic benefits to Hong Kong. And be, the government should consider giving them tax concessions to promote their development. For example, um, lease um, rental tax concessions for ocean-going vessels, so there will be more shipping companies or shipping agents attracted to come to Hong Kong to to establish their businesses. This will also help to boost the demand. This way, we're going to make the pie bigger. At the same time, we could further consolidate Hong Kong's position as a shipping center. The unemployment rate in Hong Kong is down 2.9 percent, which is um, a record low in 20 years. But then we don't have enough manpower, and that um, stands in the way of development of the different industries. I'm glad to learn from the budget that the FS has, has announced that the government would have regard to the needs of different industries and increase uh, importation of labor in an appropriate manner. I and the Liberal Party are, have always uh, suggested that we should allow appropriate degree of uh, importation of labor to support our economic development. The FS is going to check uh, uh, at least this um, Committee on Manpower Planning. We hope this committee will consider needs of different industries and make appropriate po a policy, a policies so we could bring in the necessary labor. The government has uh, stressed that uh, in, Hong in the market there are 370,000 holders of commercial vehicle licenses. But then doesn't mean all of them will join the revenue trade, especially if uh, someone needs to, uh, wants to go into the transportation sector, they work long hours, at the same time they may be held criminally liable. That's why young people are deterred. Um, so we are seeing an increasing problems of aging drive, commercial drivers. Uh, for public light bus, the average age is 68, uh, taxi is 58, and so on. So it's all about 50. And there's also there's also news report that um, um, a, the, it's a, there is a serious problem with aging commercial vehicle drivers, and that's a ticking time bomb on the road. So it's a threat to other road users. Last week at the meeting, special meetings of the Finance Committee, Secretary for Labor and Welfare, Dr. Lo Chi Kuang, said that uh, he would consider relaxing the um, restrictions of, for um, the container port and, and the cross-boundary bus services. So uh, maybe they will, uh, it will allow more mainland drivers, but that may help to uh, uh, re address the problem. But still, in the long run, we need to consider how we could increase the pool of drivers or commercial drivers in particular. Now, um, people have to pay for the uh, test and for the license um, amounting to over $1,000. Also, they need to hire a car that costs over $1,000 to take the test. So before someone uh, gets a license, uh, he would have to pay over $10,000. And that's also a deterrent. Now, the government should also relax the uh, restrictions for application for commercial um, vehicle licenses uh, for those who already hold a private uh, vehicles license. For example, shortened period from three years to one year for those who uh, have held um, private vehicle licenses. And also for those uh, with, uh, trying to get a commercial vehicle license, there could be certain incentives, uh, financial incentives for them. For example, if they obtain a license and then they are hired within a certain period and with certain certification, maybe they could get a reimbursement of part of or all of their um, 
exam fees. This will bring a new blood to the industry. Now, of course, uh, cross-boundary road uh, tr transportation is an important factor for promoting um, um, cross-boundary exchanges. Now, we th they, we also have aging of cross-boundary container truck drivers. There is now an age uh, restriction of 60 years of age. But then if there are new, no new measures to bring in new blood to the industry, then the logistics rate will see res uh, constraints in the development, and we may not be able to benefit from the commissioning of the Hong Kong Joy-Macau Bridge. Now, cross-boundary traffic is important to Hong Kong, so I hope the Secretary will uh, provide more resources to the relevant uh, fund for um, the aviation and um, uh, transportation tr training programs. So for people who uh, it, 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 they, the government should help people to obtain uh, mainland driving licenses and reference licenses. And if they succeed in getting license, they could get a reimbursement of license fees. And also for um, uh, there should be other incentives uh, for um, container truck drivers who join the tray. The government has been um, rolling out various measures to encourage the use of electric cars. Last year, there was a, a, a criticism that um, by uh, providing 100% um, waiver of um, first registration tax for electric vehicles is to just uh, make it easier for the rich to buy a new toy. So then since uh, the government has put a cap on the waiver of uh, FRT to just uh, $97,500, uh, I support this measure because if uh, we uh, offer 100% waiver, then the, there is no incentive for car manufacturers to introduce uh, cheaper electric vehicles to Hong Kong. And now we're seeing an increasing number of um, cheaper models coming to Hong Kong. Now with um, further popularization of electric vehicles, electric vehicle prices are, are bound to come down. But then the Liberal Party has asked the government to review this cap of $97,900. It should be adjusted upwards so more people would uh, go for electric vehicles. But then the government decided to um, keep this same the current cap. As for the one for one replacement scheme, that is uh, when drivers uh, buy a um, new electric car and scrap the old uh, petrol car, there could be a concession of $250,000 in uh, FRT, but then the owner must have owned the old vehicle for three years at least. Uh, some said the conditions are too harsh, and then it's been explained that uh, the conditions are to um, curb uh, speculation of second hand vehicles. I could appreciate the consideration. But uh, if we want to encourage uh, drivers to switch, owners to switch to electric vehicles, there is room for enhancing the scheme. I hope the government will listen to public views in future. When it reviews the scheme, it will make necessary adjustments. This is to respond to public views and also uh, for the scheme to be more effective in achieving its goals. Last week, there was um, um, a uh, traffic accident leading to one death and three Injuries. Uh, now, the uh, driver was uh, alleged to have been um, taking passengers for a fare. Now, we do not know yet whether there will be any insurance uh, compensation, but uh, the incident does uh, reveal that uh, if it's illegal ca uh, carrying of passengers for a fare, it could be a threat uh, to those involved. And but then the government has just ignores the problem. There is a hailing plat car hailing platform that claims that it has uh, more than 30,000 drivers. But then there are other platforms for uh, car hailing. Our uh, conservative estimate is that there are over 10,000 vehicles on the street um, engaging in illegal passenger um, service, uh, services. But then uh, the government's figure is only for 30 plus vehicles. That is totally out. Uh, um, uh, not uh, in line with the reality. We hope uh, the FS will deploy more resources to educate the, pub to educate the public about the danger of uh, taking um, illegal vehicles. And the government should also crack down on such activities. Thank you. In accordance with uh, Rule 67, bracket 2 of the Rules of Procedure, the uh, scope of this debate should be limited to the uh, economic situation in Hong Kong, the financial position in Hong Kong, the relevant uh, policies, and so on. So, members, please do not um, 
spend too much time on individual cases. Thank you. Mr. Vincent Chang. Madam Deputy,